Hi, it's Geometry Chapter 6-2. We're going to investigate properties of parallelograms. And we're going to discuss what's the definition of a parallelogram, notation relating to parallelograms, and then we'll talk about the properties of parallelograms. So first thing, the definition of a parallelogram. Parallelogram is a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure, where both pairs of opposite sides are parallel to each other. So you can see that AD is parallel to BC. You can see that by that notation. See that little symbol there, that little arrow that's red? That means those, you know, means parallel. And then there's only a single notation there for each, so that means that's a matching pair that are parallel. And these opposite sides, AB and CD, double marks, double marks, those are parallel to each other. Okay, let's, g oh, in the notation here, look, a little parallel symbol and all four letters of the vertices of this parallelogram, A, B, C, D. Okay, so we can write that notation of this parallelogram, A, B, C, D, by either writing the word parallelogram followed by those letters, or as I said, the symbol of a parallelogram in those four letters. Now, we're using all four letters to define the parallelogram, and in our textbook, it's rather nice that when they use three letters they're def it, with that symbol, they're defining a plane. And in other textbooks, mm, they tend to be a little sloppy about that and use this notation for designating a plane or a parallelogram, which is a bit confusing. So let's just stick with the idea of that symbol and three letters would be talking about the plane and four letters would be a parallelogram. Let's keep going. Okay. Um, more notation. AB and CD are opposite sides of the parallelogram, and they're parallel. And BC and AD, those are opposite sides of the parallelogram, and they are parallel to each other. And then over here, look, angle A is opposite across from angle C, and they happen to be congruent and opposite angles here, B and D, you know, they're opposite of each other and they're congruent. Okay. Um, yeah, some textbooks use the, put the symbol of a parallelogram to avoid writing out all those letters, parallelogram, and if you throw an S inside it, well, that means plural for pl parallelograms. Um, okay. I added diagonals to this image, so look, when we go to a um, the vertex for the opposing angles, opposite angles, and connect that line segment there. Those are diagonals. So AC is a diagonal, and BD are, is a diagonal of the parallelogram. Okay, let's see. I think I already talked about, oh, consecutive angles. Um, angles that share the same sides, so angle A and angle B, those are consecutive angles. B and C are consecutive angles, and C and D are consecutive angles, and so is A and D. Easy way to, to note that just by looking at the letters, A and B are consecutive angles if they both share the line segment that has those two letters in it, A and B. Look, 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 look at the next pair, B and C, B and C, and they share the side BC. And same stuff, continue. We have, when I said consecutive angles, we also in the past have referred to when we have a pair of parallel lines intersecting a transversal, then we called those consecutive angles same side interior angles. Okay, let's keep so what other properties does a parallelogram have? Well, let's go down the list here. Let's look at it. One of the issues that, that a parallelogram has is the opposite sides are congruent to each other, which is shown in this picture. Opposite angles are congruent to each other. And also notice that we're dealing with same side interiors, so they are they're supplementary, the consecutive angles. Those two consecutive angles are supplementary as well. Let's see. Ah, diagonals bisect each other. So you can see as I drag around the points, you can see that you know, those diagonals are cut in half by each other. Okay, 
space, so I added the midpoint E. And I colored each diagonal as different colors, so you wouldn't mistakenly think that, that those diagonals um, are congruent to each other, because they're not necessarily. You'll find out later in the chapter that the diagonals are congruent to each other if it's a rectangle or a square. Yeah, we're done with the video. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so let's run down everything that we just saw in the video. If uh, theorem 6.3 is a, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, which I'm specifying here in these statements here, and I showed the picture that's a parallelogram, then each pair of opposite sides are congruent. So AB is congruent to CD, and BC is congruent to AD, which I wrote. Next theorem. Theorem 6.4. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary, which I already alluded to in this conversation, that it looks an awful lot like postulate 3.1, the same side interior angles. Um, you know, if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the same side interior angles are supplementary, and that's what's happening here. This notation is once again s starting out with the hypothesis of saying if it's a parallelogram, and then, well, a and B are consecutive angles, and they're supplementary, and so are B and C, and so are C and D, and so are D A and D. Keep going. Theorem 6.5. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite angles are congruent. And they are. So angle A is congruent to angle C. Angle B is congruent to angle D. Theorem 6.6. 6. If the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the diagonals bisect each other. And so, you know, we have the diagonal AC, and E is a midpoint, so AE is congruent to EC, and E is also the midpoint for diagonal BD, so BE is congruent to ED. Also, let's sort of think a little bit further outside the box. If E is a midpoint for AC, that would also mean that if you had the length of EC and you doubled it, that would then be the length of the entire diagonal AC. Let's keep going. So now we're going to apply all these theorems that we just learned. So uh, if we're going to apply, let's see, if this is a parallelogram and we're going to apply 6.3, that is theorem 6.3, then that would mean that the opposite sides are congruent. So you set x plus t uh, 12 is equal to 22, and subtract 12 from each side, and you get x is 10. Next example. Um, well, we're going to apply th uh, theorem 6.4, which means that these consecutive angles are supplementary. So the setup is that expression, 6x plus 4, plus the other angle, 110, is equal to 180. Combine like terms. Subtract the 1, uh, 14 from each side, and then you're dividing both sides by 6, and you get x is 11. Next one. We're going to apply uh, theorem 6, 5, which means that the opposite angles are congruent to each other, so you set up an equality that 13x plus 11 is equal to 115. Subtract the 11 from each side, divide by 13 on each side, and you wind up with x is 8. And I think we're down to the last one. Let's see. We're going to apply theorem 6.6, 6, which says that the diagonals bisect each other. So diagonal CA is cutting diagonal BD in half. So therefore, if BD, the entire length of that diagonal is 48, and QD is, is uh, 5x plus 4, if you double QD, the red segment there, then you'd set that equal to the entire length of BD. So, okay, so I set it up as double that expression, 5x plus 4 is equal to 48. And then some students are going to be uncomfortable with this, is that instead of distributing the 2, I'm dividing both sides by 2. So this way I turn that 48 into a 24, and the 2's are gone. So you're left with a 5x plus 4. And if you subtract 4 from both sides and then divide by 5, you wind up with x is 4. I think that's it. Yep, thank you for watching this video.